presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned.
Let's begin with prayer. Lord, your greatness calls us to worship you. Your power calls us to adore you and your love calls us to trust you. As we come together in this way tonight, may we know your presence with us and may your Holy Spirit open our ears and our hearts to fresh insights from your word. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening, everyone. And welcome to St John's Church online service. I hope you're all doing okay and I hope that you will be blessed um, this evening and even if you're watching this later on or some other time. Tonight I'll be leading us through the service and we'll be hearing a message from our vicar Richard and it's lovely to have Carolyn back with me tonight and she'll be leading us in a time of prayer later on. So as usual, let's begin with our notices before we start. So on the 20th of March, we're going to have a time of fellowship together at church through a bring and share lunch. So if you'd like to come to this, please let us know by putting your name on the notice board in the narthex at church. Or you could phone the church office or let us know through our Facebook page. And please note that on the 20th of March, there will be no online service, uh, but that will restart again on the 27th of March. Mothering Sunday is also on the 27th of March, 
and there is only one service happening in the church building on this date and that is at 10.30 a.m. So on the 6th of April at 7.30 in the evening, uh, we have a visitor coming to church, uh, Reverend Ian Birkinshaw from York, and he'll be giving us a one-man live performance of the Gospel of Mark. Now, apparently, this is really, really good. I know someone who has seen this uh, many times, so if you're free, then please do come along um, to this. There is an admission fee of £5, and this will go to the Ukrainian Refugee Appeal. Okay, let's prepare our hearts uh, to worship the Lord. And as usual, please join in with us to say the words in yellow as we go through the service. We meet in the name of God, God, God the, the Father, Father God, God the Son, God, God the Spirit, God, God is one. As God's people we have gathered, let, let us worship, worship him together. together. So let's hear the words from the shortest psalm, Psalm 117. Let's use these words to inspire our praises tonight. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. So we are going to praise the Lord now uh, by singing two songs. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, followed by These Are the Days of Elijah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your
me and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise on and then 10000 years and then for in that song the words prepare ye the way of the Lord. The season of Lent that we're in provides us with an opportunity to clear a path in our lives for God and so now we're going to have a time of confession to help us to do this and to help us to acknowledge the sin that currently hinders a clear path for God in our lives. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. So we'll have a moment of silence as we ask God to show us our need for his forgiveness.
Wash me thorough from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So before we hear words of God's forgiveness, let's use the next song to continue to show our desire for God to change us, to clean us from the inside out. Purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let me be as gold, pure gold, rid by the spark. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart. Choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. Purify my heart, cleanse me from within. from my sin, deep within, with finest heart. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be So may the almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So our first Bible reading tonight comes from 1 John and chapter 3. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. 
If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, beginning to read at verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The church is a community of love. That's my theme today. So far in our journey of 40 days of love, we've thought about God's love for you and me. Uh, this amazing love that is infinite and individual and intervening and intimate. But God also calls us to learn to love him back. And we love God by making him the centre of our lives, laying our lives upon the altar and uh, learning to worship him and pray to him and think about him and focus on him and to do the whole of our life for him. And we express that love for God also by simply doing the things he asks us to do. Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commands. And one of the key things that Jesus stressed that he wanted his, his disciples to do was to learn to love one another, to become a community of love. And that's what we're going to think about uh, this week and actually next week as well. So first of all today, I want us to think about love between different churches. Let me put the next slide on. Love between different churches. Now there's a young boy who asked his friend, why can't I come to your church? And his friend said, because I belong to another abomination. And that's sadly, there's a lot of truth in that as we look at church history. And yet Jesus wants and prays for a oneness, a unity, a love to be expressed between all Christians everywhere throughout all time. I can't imagine it was ever Jesus' intention we would have all the divisions and denominations that we have these days. Let's have a look at uh, Jesus' teaching in John chapter 17. Jesus said, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them 
and you in me. Now the oneness that Jesus prayed for is more than just an institutional oneness consisting of constitutions and agreements and creeds and things, although you know those things have their place. But if you look at that text, Jesus' oneness that he prays for is all to do with his presence, his reality. The, the presence of God that flows between God the Father and God the Son, reaching out to embrace those people who believe in Jesus and making them part of that oneness too. It's sort of a, a spiritual union uh, that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. And Jesus prayed for that and God has answered that through Jesus' death and his resurrection and the outpouring of the Spirit. We now have a situation in which everybody who believes in Jesus is in union with God through Christ. And Christ lives in each believer through the Holy Spirit. Every Christian has God as their Father, Jesus as their Saviour and the Holy Spirit living in them. And those realities make all Christians one, even if it doesn't always look like that from the outside. But of course, clearly, uh, Jesus wants that oneness that we have to be visible in the world. Look at what Jesus says next. Put the next slide on. He says, may they be brought to complete unity that the world will know that you sent me. That might remind you of something that Jesus said earlier on, and we see that in John 13. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So Jesus wants his followers to be a community of love. Yes, we have this divine, invisible, spiritual unity, but he wants that oneness to be made visible to the whole world by the way Christians love each other in practice. The oneness and the love that exists between the persons of the Trinity, God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, is meant to be revealed to the world through the way the church is in its relationships between its members. But of course that very often hasn't been the case as we look at the history of the church. All sorts of awful things, awful things have happened between Christians and different denominations. Let me tell you a silly story. There was a man who was walking once to... Um, on a bridge, a high bridge, late at night, and he came across another man who was stood right on the very end of the bridge, right on the very edge, uh, about to leap off and plunge to his death. And the first man shouts out, No! Don't do it! And the other guy looks round and looks at him. And in order to engage him in conversation, the first man says, Are you a Christian? And the man who was about to jump off says, well, actually, I am. And the first man comes up to him, takes his hand and leads him away from the edge. And then to continue the conversation, he says, it's so good that you're a Christian. Are you a Catholic or a Protestant? And the man who was going to jump off says, I'm a Protestant. And the first man says, well, that's brilliant. So am I. Tell me more. Are you an Episcopal or a Baptist? And the man says, I'm a Baptist. So am I, says the first man. But tell me, are you Southern Baptist or American Baptist? And the, uh, the man who was about to jump off says, well, I'm Southern Baptist. And the person who rescued him says, brilliant. So am I. We have so much in common. But tell me, are you original Southern Baptist or Southern Baptist Reformed? I'm Southern Baptist Reformed, said the man. And the first man says, that's absolutely amazing. So am I. And they give each other a big hug. But tell me, said the first man, are you reformed Southern Baptist of the Reformation of 1879 or reformed Southern Baptist of the Reformation of 1915? And the other man answered, I'm reformed Baptist of 
uh, Reformation 1915, to which the first man said, well, in that case, die, you heretic, and pushes him off the bridge. <laughs> well, joking aside, over the years, blood has been spilt between Christians of different traditions. Christians have persecuted one another. Churches have not just divided, but have spoken horribly to one another, imprisoned one another, and attempted uh, at, at times to put one another to death. And you, it's difficult to think of anything that is further away from the vision of Jesus for his people, from that kind of history. The truth is, is that all Christians are one. God is our Father. Jesus is our Saviour and the Holy Spirit lives inside every believer. And those realities make us one, irrespective of our differences. Thankfully, these days, uh, most of us get on well with people from other denominations, even though we don't always agree with everything they believe and everything they do. But we're very much like branches of the same tree or regiments in the same army, or different positions in a football team or on a cricket team. We may look different, we may behave differently, but we are still on the same side. We are one. And it's really important that the world can see that. And yet the unity that Jesus was looking for was much more than a denominational unity. Jesus was looking to build communities of his people all over the world in which each of those congregations would be, uh, his reality would be seen in the way that they treated each other with real sacrificial love. So let's think a little bit more about that now. We move on between love between churches to love uh, within churches. Well, let me just show you that picture. I meant to put that up earlier. Uh, a, little, a little diagram showing all the different denominations. But of course there are thousands and thousands of denominations in each of those different branches of the tree. So let's think about love within each church. John writes this in his letter. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Now this is where things get really challenging. Speaking nicely about Christians from other denominations and praying for them and occasionally working alongside them, well that's relatively achievable isn't it? But for every Christian community to be marked by this kind of love, sacrificial love, where we're willing to actually lay down our lives so that our brothers and sisters can grow and be healed and be helped and really flourish. Well, that's a much bigger challenge, isn't it? And yet, at various times throughout church history in various parts of the world, uh, Christians have demonstrated this wonderful Jesus-like love. Uh, in the third century, there's a, a Christian theologian called Tertullian, and he wrote lots of books and papers defending the Christian faith. Uh, and in one of them, he speaks about how amazed the pagans were at the quality of uh, life in churches the pagans were actually saying this see how these christians love one another they are ready even to die for one another and they were saying that at a time when the church was persecuting and people were dying for their faith and the christians really uh, stuck together and supported one another in that situation well next week our preachers are going to help us to think more about the practical ways in which we can get better at loving one another in each church. Uh, but I just want to say a few thoughts from John's letter on how we might begin to grow in our love for our brothers and sisters. Firstly, we need to love one another with our attitudes. So John writes, 
Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. Now that sounds a bit extreme, doesn't it? It's a strong way of putting it. But John is really just quoting the Lord Jesus. Remember, Jesus taught that the thoughts and the feelings that we have on the inside are just as real in God's eyes as the things that we do on the outside. So it's really important that we deal with any bad attitudes we might have in our hearts towards our brothers and sisters. We need to repent when feelings and thoughts rise up in our hearts that about judging somebody who's in the church family or if we find ourselves looking down on somebody else or holding a grudge because of what somebody has said to us or because of what somebody has done or if we find ourselves choosing to avoid certain people in our church or even gossiping about them to others or being unkind towards them all of that has to go as followers of Jesus we need to repent of those sorts of attitudes and learn to love people from the heart so we love people with our attitudes we love people with our actions and John is very practical this is what he writes if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them how can the love of God be in that person dear children let us not love with words or speech but with actions and truth now, actually, at St John's Church, over the years, I've witnessed many good examples of this being put into practice. Some of you have cooked meals for church members when they've been ill, or perhaps when uh, they're a young family and they've had a baby. Uh, when a brother or sister has fallen on hard times, some of you have gone round and taken food to them, or even given them money to help them through. Others have accompanied people uh, to a doctor's appointment or to a hospital when they couldn't get there by themselves. And many of us check up on one another uh, when we're not well or when we're missing and provide support in that way. And all of that is brilliant. Let's just make sure that we all do that and we all do it even more. Thirdly, we need to love each other, not just with our attitudes or our actions, but also with our attachments. So John writes in earlier in his letter, we have fellowship with one another. Fellowship. Now that's a strange word. Fellowship is more than just having a cup of tea and a biscuit after the church service, although there's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a start. But the word fellowship really means sharing, close friendship, sharing. And in practice, that means if you want to have that level of sharing, it means we have to spend a lot of time with people. We have to develop a sense of attachment in our church family such that everybody else who is there feels like a brother and sister uh, in our extended family. And I think lots of modern day churches really struggle with this, including our church. And I feel um, that pressure in my own heart uh, as well, because life today in the 21st century is just so incredibly busy. There's so much work pressure for many people today and there can be great family commitments. Um, and then there's just so many other things that we can be doing other than spending time with our Christian brothers and sisters. I mean, leisure is just at our fingertips all the time, either at the big box in the corner of the living room or else in lots of these little boxes, mobile phones and uh, tablets. Uh, there's so many things that we can be doing rather than spending time with the people Jesus asks us to spend time with. And I know too from experience that some of our people are a little bit fearful of getting too involved in church commitments because the rest of life is so stressful. And I can understand all of that and I feel that pressure to an extent myself. And yet we have to remind ourselves of Jesus's vision for the church. What does Jesus want us to be like as his people? 
And we can see in the scriptures that he really wants us to love one another and to build these communities of love throughout the world that will make his presence and his truth real to people who are a part of this messed up, broken, sinful world. So it's so important that we come back to what Jesus wants and we make some progress in trying to make that real uh, in our midst here at St John's Church. Well, as I said a moment ago, our preachers next week are going to help us to explore this in a bigger way. But let me just share here a few sort of baby steps that we can all take if we want to do, grow this fellowship, this love within our church. Firstly, if you're not in the habit of coming each Sunday to Sunday worship, then come more often, spend time with your brothers and sisters. And how about staying for refreshments afterwards and just chatting to one another? And don't just talk to the people you already know, get to know some of the other people too. And then when there are opportunities to eat food together and to socialise together as a church, come and get involved. It all just helps us to build relationship, to build that sense of warmth and encouragement and mutual support. If you're not in a discipleship group, then uh, come and join one of those groups. If you don't know what a discipleship group is, it's basically a small group of people who meet on a weekly or fortnightly basis in uh, one of the people's homes to read the Bible together and to worship together and to pray together and to support each other. You really get to know a few people uh, well by doing that. Another way to build up the sense of relationship in church is to serve on one of our church ministry teams alongside other people who you'll get to know better if you do that. And then also to pray regularly for those you do know. You know, if you pray for somebody on a regular basis, it really increases your love for them. Well, those are only a few little baby steps, but if we can all do more of them more often, it will help to rebuild the sense of family life in our church community. So let's let's all do that. But last thing I want to say is just to encourage you that all of this challenging stuff about loving relationships shouldn't feel like a worry or a stress or a burden to us. Uh, yes, it's a challenge, but wouldn't it be wonderful to be part of a church that is just known for the love, for the encouragement, for the warmth, for the mutual support, for all the healing that we bring to each other, for all the encouragement we uh, can give to one another. Wouldn't it, be part, wouldn't it be great to be part of such a church family? Well, let me finish with these con with this concluding thought here by uh, another vicar, the Reverend Nicky Gumbel, famous for the Alpha Course. Uh, well, he is currently vicar of Holy Trinity Church in Brompton, which must be the biggest a Church of England church by far, we have over, over, over uh, 5,000 church members. Uh, well, Nicky said this about church. Church is not an organisation you join. It's a family where you belong, a home where you are loved and a hospital where you find healing. And may God help us here at St. John's Church, or if you're watching this from another church, may God help you in your church to develop such a community that is known for that quality of love. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Before we have um, a time of prayer, we're going to sing or you may just want to listen to um, our next song brother sister let me serve you <laughs>
So Carolyn's going to come now and lead us in a time of prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray for your world, which is struggling to live justly and in peace. We remember before you tonight the situation in Ukraine. We pay, pray for an end to the conflict and for peace, your peace, to reign in that place. Bless all who would act as peacemakers. Give them wisdom beyond human wisdom as they seek to negotiate a ceasefire and guide the leaders of all nations in how best to respond to what is happening in Ukraine. We pray for the people who are trapped in cities under siege without food or water or power and for all those who are now refugees and for the countries who are receiving them that they may be received with a good welcome, with compassion and that their immediate need may be met in abundance. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for your church around the world, and especially for our own church community here at St John's, that we would be a spiritual family, where people are welcomed and nourished and loved. We pray for the witness of your church, that everything we do in your name may demonstrate your love and compassion to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yes. our prayer. We pray for our local communities. We remember before you the families and individuals who are struggling to make ends meet and who are worried about the huge rises in energy costs and inflation. Bless the work of local food banks and all organisations who seek to help those in need. Help us as a church to be sensitive to the needs around us. Help us to be quick to respond to those needs and help us to respond generously. Lord, in your mercy, hear yes. our prayer. We pray for anyone we know who is ill or struggling in any kind of way. We know that you are Lord and healer and we name these people before you in the silence now. Lord, bring them your healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear yes. our prayer. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. You know the worries on our hearts, the things that we can share only with you. We name those before you quietly now and ask that you would give us strength and courage and wisdom to deal with the situations that each of us face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, Amen. So, Gavrin, all our prayers and praises into one as our Saviour has taught us. So we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as our time tonight uh, comes to an end, uh, let's sing the church's one foundation.
But thank you for joining us tonight. And as you go into a new week, may you know God's blessing upon you. So may God, who gives patience and encouragement, give you a spirit of unity to live in harmony as you follow Jesus Christ, so that with one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Shine.